Hey, welcome back. It is time to start talking about eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and eigenspaces. So when you first hear these words, um, and when you probably read your textbook chapter or go to lecture, this stuff is actually, it, it seems overwhelming at first, just because the word eigen, I don't know, just kind of throws people off. It sounds more intense than it is. Um, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So really, all you need to know to get started is this one expression. AX equals lambda X. So in this case, we have A here. A is a matrix. It's actually an N by N matrix. And X is just a vector. And lambda is a scalar. And so if you can construct an expression like this where you have a matrix multiplied by a certain vector, and that is equal to a scalar multiplied by that same vector, and I mean that just like returns the same answer, uh, or basically applies the same transformation, or you, you end up with the same vector at the end, um, then that means that we are dealing with eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And that's all this really is, is just trying to come up with an expression like this that works. And, and if it does work, then like I said, we got the eigenvectors and we got the eigenvalues. And kind of the, uh, the, the proper way to say these things, um, for example, for lambda, we say that lambda is an eigenvalue of A, or another way we say it is it's a characteristic value of A. And when we're referring to the eigenvectors, uh, we say that like X would be an eigenvector belonging to lambda uh, or a characteristic vector belonging to lambda. Um, and then the only other things that we really need to know is that the eigenvector X has to be non-zero. Obviously, if you just multiply a matrix and then by n matrix by the, uh, the zero vector of the same dimension and then also multiply that same zero vector by a scalar, it all just turns out to give you the zero vector. Uh, so X needs to be non-zero. And also the other thing here is uh, the matrix here that we're dealing with with eigenvalues and stuff uh, has to be an n by n matrix, which means it is square. All right, so it turns out when we move on with this discussion that we can rewrite ax equals lambda x as a minus lambda i all times x equals zero. And it turns out that lambda will only be an eigenvalue of a if and only if this expression here, a minus lambda i all times x equals zero, has a non-trivial solution. Which means that this guy here, which is a matrix, uh, has a determinant which is equal to zero, which also means that this is a singular matrix. And if you remember what that means, that basically if a matrix is singular, then it happens to also be not invertible. But we don't really need to get into that uh, inverses for the purposes of talking about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. I think the more important thing is to say, what is that, like, what's going on here? Why is this thing a matrix? Well, if we pick an example matrix, let's say this one, and we apply a matrix operation where we subtract the identity matrix, it looks like this. And if we separately consider a different matrix operation, which is scalar multiple of a matrix, where we have some scalar called lambda, we multiply that by the identity matrix, we end up getting this guy. And so then if we just take this one step further and combine them where we have a minus lambda i, then we end up with something like this, which is still just a two by two matrix or an n by n matrix. In this case, we, we started with the two by two matrix. Um, but what I wanna show you is that a minus lambda i is a matrix. And that's why we're saying up here, this expression here is basically just a matrix times a vector. Um, and so that's why we can take the determinant of this because it is still just a matrix. So if we actually do write out or expand the determinant, we're going to get an nth degree polynomial, which we call the characteristic polynomial. And this expression up here, we call the characteristic equation of A. And so when we set the characteristic polynomial equal to zero, then the roots of it are going to be the eigenvalues of matrix A. And uh, basically the characteristic polynomial will have exactly n roots. So in this case where we have an n by n, which is two by two matrix, we're going to find exactly two roots. And the thing about these roots is they can be repeated and they can also be complex. But I think for now, we'll just stick to examples with real numbers only. So if we just apply that to this example down here and we take the determinant of a minus lambda i, we find these two roots and each of them are one of the two eigenvalues. So our first eigenvalue is 28 and our second eigenvalue is two. 
Um, the other thing that we can do here is if we want to find the eigenvectors, what we need to do is take the null space of a minus lambda i, and we do this once for each eigenvalue that we have. So in this case, we would have to do it twice. So the notation is the capital N followed with the name of the matrix in the brackets. And uh, let's do it for uh, lambda value two, just for, just for an example here. So we basically sub in the value, basically the same thing that we had in this expression. And when we find the null space in this case, the null space when it's set up like this is actually also called the eigenspace. And then if all we have to do is find the basis of the eigenspace to find the eigenvector that's belonging to this eigenvalue, in this case, eigenvalue number two. So if we just apply a couple simple elementary row operations, then we're going to find that our eigenspace has this form where the first element is the basically just four, negative four times greater than the second element. So what we've written here is the eigenspace. And if we just pull out the x, then we get this where we have negative four and one. And what we have here inside the brackets is our eigenvector belonging to lambda two. So this is just one eigenvector. There, there will be another eigenvector that corresponds to lambda one. But I think that's good enough now just for the introduction. We don't need to go through the entire problem because this was just an example basically to support kind of the stuff that I was saying up here, that this expression is really important, ax equals lambda x, and it's basically the same thing as this a minus lambda i all times x equals zero. And that's all you really need to know when you're going after these problems that basically the eigenvector uh, again, and eigenvalues are just things that satisfy this expression, and this is generally the method that we follow when we're looking for them. So join me in the next couple of videos, and we'll go over different examples, kind of comprehensive examples, going through finding all of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, or some other specific examples where sometimes you're given an eigenvalue or an eigenvector, and you're asked to kind of prove that it is one or something like that. So uh, yeah, that'll be the content of the next couple of videos. So I will see you guys there. Thanks for watching.